Hello everyone, my name is Fox. This is the GPD Win 4, and as should be very obvious, we are running Linux here. The distro I am running is Garuda Linux, kernel is 611 Zen 1. Now I am dual booting here, so it's on the same SSD. It auto partitions itself, so Windows 11 is also on this SSD as well, and I can kind of show you that later on. Before we get too far here, in this video will be the last of the encrypted characters to join my exclusive Discord channel. If you were looking to join, this video would lead you to the last bit of encrypted characters. Remember, there are 10 characters per Discord link. So it'll be Discord whatever slash those 10 characters. Now, the 10 characters that I have embedded in all of my previous videos are encrypted. So you still need to decrypt them and all of that information has already been given out. So good luck to the people that are looking to join. Let's get back to talking about Linux on the GPU Win 4. The good news here is even though, you know, you may run different distros than me, but I didn't do anything in particular to get anything really running. The touchscreen is working as it should because the display presents itself as a landscape. Everything just worked as you would because typically you would have a portrait based screen then we'd have to rotate it but none of that is really necessary here which is great to see additionally you have this little mouse nub in over here that works just fine so a single click here versus a hold click will be a right click and that all works just fine the only thing that i haven't been able to get any traction whatsoever on is the fingerprint sensor so if we can just go here let me just make sure that this is the active window i'm gonna click into there so if i do ls usb you'll be able to see that the Focal Systems Corp fingerprint guy right there, um, it lists it, it enumerates it, so it sees it, but I haven't been able to track down any particular driver or anything to get that to work. Here we can see where it says Xbox 360 controller. The reason why it says Xbox 360 controller is that I'm already switched into gamepad mode. The Xpad kernel driver that was in there prior, I removed. I was having difficulty switching between them. Going to mouse mode always works, so then these analog sticks becomes a mouse. So that was never a problem. The issue is going back in the gamepad mode. Sometimes it just wouldn't kind of wake up. So I have Xbox Drive running and I enabled the system CTL to have it run on startup. And that basically works just fine right now. It's not as good as compatibility was with XPad, but I have easier time switching between them and working. So that's one thing for me in this particular distro. It may not be the same for all distros. I'm just kind of mentioning what I have here. Uh, outside of that, everything else works. I mean, if you should be able to see that this is off, but if I go and press that on, you can see that the backlight is on if I do FN space, the backlight turns off. Likewise, if I do FN hotkeys, the brightness will come up and go all the way up. And we'll go back down just so it's not blasting out my screen. So that works. Unfortunately, there is no FN hotkey for sound, and even the volume keys aren't really working. Sound works just fine. It's just that I can't raise or lower the volume without, you know, trying to figure out where these buttons are mapped to. So, you know, listening for what these controller buttons do and then mapping them myself. I don't particularly think that's a huge issue, but it's just something that I am noting here. Outside of that, everything pretty much works. I haven't tried Thunderbolt, even though it does list it there. So if we do uh, LSPCI... All right, so you do see that it does recognize USB 4, Thunderbolt there. So you can see the Intel AX210 Wi-Fi is working just fine. Bluetooth is just working just fine. Let's go ahead and connect Bluetooth just so you guys can see that. Okay, device wireless controller configured. This should be now solid, and it is. Huzzah! Ah, that's actually easier. All right, so here we can see that this is up, and if I just... So Bluetooth works just fine as you would anticipate it to work. The only thing that you're going to need is if you wanted to control the TDP, you will need to build a rise and adjust from source. Let me go ahead and close this window. So you can see that I've set TDP to 15 watt right there, and you will have to build rise and adjust from source. We'll go ahead and click play here. All right, and then in our metrics, we can see all this is running just fine. You see GPU says 11 watt, 12 watt. Now that's just power from GPU, not CPU as well. Obviously there's four watt, three watt for CPU and Encore in this particular configuration. If we take a look at our battery meter right here. We're running at 27.2 watt. Pretty much similar to what the Steam Deck would get in a 15 watt configuration. So at 15 watt TDP, you're gonna be burning like 27 watt. At 100% battery, you would be getting, at 15 watt, around two hours of battery life in this particular uh, situation. Obviously, if we were to cap frame rate, but right now I am running ridiculous uh, settings. So if we go to video, you can see that my actual settings, I am running 720p, but settings wise, everything is at ultra nightmare. So it's actually maxed out, even though we're at a relatively low resolution. 
Now, if we wanted to go in like alt tab, we can alt tab and we will go to this and let's just boost it up to, let's say 25 watt. Okay, so I've set 25 watt, we'll say yes. Okay, and right there, I've set it to 25 watt. If we jump back into the game, go here, close it off. We can see that total system power is now at 40 watt because 25 watt TDP, but then all the external stuff that's running, RAM, SSD, display, Wi-Fi, all that jazz. And you can see our frame rate uh, went up accordingly. At this point, we could probably just juice our settings a little bit more. Let's go into video and instead of uh, 720p, we'll just do full 1080. Give it a second to think about that. There it goes. Alrighty. And there we go. So now I'm running full resolution, full HD, 1080p here. Not quite hitting 60, but kind of similar settings to what it was before. Obviously, this is still Ultra Nightmare, so it's kind of ridiculous how this is running at all. So obviously, there's going to be some things that you need to do. You will need to build Rise and Adjust from source, but after you do that, you can pretty much do whatever you really want to do. Uh, just be mindful that running at 25 watt, you can see we're running... At 25 watt TDP, when we're juicing it as much as we are, we're not able to actually achieve 60 FPS at these ridiculous settings. So, you know, we would be pushing max TDP in this area, 25 watt. You can see battery is at an hour right now, but I'm already down to 86%. So it would be around 80 minutes of battery life, 85 minutes of battery life at 25 watt TDP. It is only a 47 watt hour battery. It is a relatively small battery, but it's still 15% greater in capacity than the Steam Deck. So really cool to see. I mean, it's... If you were the type of person that wanted to run Linux exclusively, a lot of stuff already works here. The fingerprint sensor seems to be one thing that doesn't work, but I mean, quite literally, I just installed this and then just, you know, installed Steam, did everything else, and everything's just working just fine. Likewise, if we were to go ahead and switch over to mouse mode, this will now work as mouse. Now, this is uh, already mapped. Now, I've set all the mappings in Windows already with GPD's own tool to actually program the firmware. So you can change these mappings, but they don't have a Linux app for that. So you would have to do that in Windows. Let's go ahead and just kind of just jump into a Windows real quick. So we'll go ahead and restart. And I just want to show you how I would jump in between them. As we're rebooting, I'm just going to keep on pressing the Dell key, which is the top right keyboard key. All right. And that gets us into the BIOS. And then at this point, you can see where I have uh, save and exit. It's boot override. So you can do Windows Boot Manager, or you can see where it says Garuda by Win SSD. They're both on the by one SSD. So dual booting is supported. Easy peasy. It's just a computer, right? The only thing that else that is kind of wonky about Linux. Let me actually just go here. We'll do CMD. So if you look here, it says the following sleep states are available on the system. Standby S3. So GPD has been configuring a lot of their systems to just be using uh, S3 sleep, which is the preferred sleep method that we want. So that's the last thing that I kind of want to leave this off at. I don't know if we're actually ever going to have the fingerprint sensor working on Linux as it is. If someone makes a driver for it, that would you know, pretty much be the area, but I didn't see any sp uh, support for it. The other thing is that you will have to map these keys and grabbing where those hardware keys are, I don't really think is very difficult, but it's going to be a thing, at least on the distro that I chose. So be prepared for that. The other thing is S3 Sleep might need a little bit of work to get working properly on Linux as well. But outside of that, everything works as you would expect it to. You will have to obviously build from source to modify the TDP, but then you can kind of do whatever you want and you know, the world's your oyster at that point. I'm going to go over here and just, you know, launch into Garuda. And you can see right there is how it goes. So that's pretty much uh, my quick look at Linux on the GPD Win 4. For the most part, it's actually pretty awesome. Like, it just install and start working. There's very little to actually do to get into a working state on the GPD Win 4. So that's super awesome to see. As always, guys, thank you for your time. And thanks for watching.